Hey guys, and welcome to Watch Parties, where we are here pursuing Jesus together as a church. And wherever you are watching, we are just so glad that you are here watching and joining us in on this watch party. And just to start us off, I want to reflect quick on this past Sunday message where Pastor Brad, you finished us off with the Philippians series, talking about Philippians 3 and 4. And I think what we really saw in those chapters and really Philippians as a whole was just how the major themes about unity and contentment um, and talking to the Philippians and it's still applicable for us today, which I really loved. Yeah, I kind of ran out of time the week before, so I had to save some of chapter three for this week, but it actually all ran together really smoothly. Remember, this is one long letter, so it's not really, you know, like four different letters that he wrote. Uh, So it does flow pretty well that way. And, And yeah, we were looking specifically this week at unity and contentment as themes And I want to dive deeper into unity and specifically unity through difficulty, Um, because it is really easy to feel unified when everyone thinks the same way, acts the same way, believes the same way. Uh, But I don't know about you. I've never been a part of a church like that (laughs) or a group like that. And honestly, just, you know, two people together is hard to have that. Um, And I, I really think that there's something Paul was going after that we didn't have time to dive too deep into on Sunday that we can dive deeper into now uh, with yeah. our time together. So let's look back on a couple of verses, Philippians 3, 15 and 16. Paul said, let all who are spiritually mature agree on these things. If you disagree on some point, I believe God will make it plain to you, Paul said, mm. but we must hold on to the progress we've already made. A couple of bullet points here with these verses. Paul says, in maturity, let's agree together. In disagreement, let's trust God to make it plain to us. And, in, and disunity really is a threat to the progress of the church overall. Um, those are important things to take note of. Um, in Philippians 4 verse 2, Paul's actually appealing to two specific people, two women that he says helped spread the gospel and were co-laborers with him. And he says this to them, please, because you belong to the Lord, settle your disagreement. In other words, we can't just let our disagreements go on unsettled, hanging in the air, you know. Uh, It it really erodes the relational quality, the relationship health that we're going for. Um, So let's settle our disagreements. Let them be settled. Let them be um, really completed, finalized, and not just leave them hanging. You know, I I really think this is important because I believe that whatever revival or outpouring God is preparing for us, our church, our region, our communities, our cities, our nation, I think that a big part of that is going to be Uh, renewed passion, renewed aspect to uh, the healthy culture of our churches and the healthy relationships within our churches. This is really important to the heart of God. Yeah, it makes me think of um, like when we're talking about unity and that idea of like, Mm -hmm. that's going to be really key, especially with God bringing revival to our church, um, the church as a whole, that how do you get there? How do you get to to the unity? Because unity, healthy relationships is a difficult thing. I remember uh, when I was in college, uh, they, uh, one of my classes, the teachers explained this idea of just basically how to have authentic, healthy relationships. And he drew on the board uh, on one side, uh, artificial relationships, and then mm-hmm. on the other side, authentic relationships. And then he drew this tunnel um, in between the two and basically said, this is the tunnel of discomfort. And mm, you wow. have to make the transition from artificial relationships to authentic relationships. But to get there, you need to go through the tunnel of discomfort. Now, some of you may be hearing this and you're like, I don't know if I agree with that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I like to think of it is think about uh, people in your life where you are very close to who you are very close to. Um, even it can be your family, it can be your best friends, but a lot of times it's because something you walk through difficult, a difficult thing you walked through together, Mm -hmm. or maybe you have something similar with someone, um, say it's a, someone, they lost their father and you meet someone else and they lost their father. There's an immediate, like, Mm -hmm. uh, there's a discomfort thing, a difficult thing that you both have gone through through and there's immediate connection. Uh, It's like, okay, you get me. I don't have to really be surface level artificial Mm -hmm. with you. Sometimes it's maybe you've gone through the same sickness, just the same trials, but sometimes the difficulty is not uh, an actual thing. It's actual an actual person. Maybe it's Mm -hmm. a person you might be thinking of right now. Maybe it's you, that (laughs) difficult thing. It's, it's, uh, and what am I talking about? I'm talking about relationships. Uh, relationships present the opportunity for something beautiful to happen, but 
they also present the opportunity for hurt and offense. And when there's hurt, when there's offense, that is very likely to happen in a relationship. Mm -hmm. You have to go through that tunnel of discomfort to achieve that authentic relationship. In order to let someone get close, you have to take the risk of trusting in them. Yeah, I mean, what we're talking about is how badly we all want healthy, mm -hmm. meaningful, deep relationships. But in order to do that, I love what you just said, you have to trust yeah. and open up to someone. You have to take a risk. A trust in someone else is always a risk because none of us are perfect right. and none of us can anticipate each other's needs or thoughts. And sometimes we say stupid things, do stupid things that hurt other people. And walking through a relationship, we, we have to find unity even in the midst of difficulty or discomfort, as you said, I love that, the tunnel of discomfort. So you could just use that next time you're walking through a, a disagreement with someone, you can just in your mind go, all right, we're just walking through the tunnel of discomfort, which means on the other end, we're gonna have a more authentic relationship than we did before. Um, this is really important to the heart of God, as, as I said earlier, and uh, a, a passage that comes to mind in thinking about how God feels about this is Matthew 5, when Jesus is preaching the Sermon on the Mount, and he's talking about relationships. He says, you've heard that our ancestors were told you must not murder. If you commit murder, you are subject to judgment, Jesus says. But I say, if you're even angry with someone, uh, you are subject to judgment. Even if you call someone an idiot, that's, I mean, I think this is a pretty modern translation. <laughs> uh, even if you call someone an idiot, you are in danger of being brought before the court. And if you curse someone, you are in danger of the fires of hell. But check this out. In verse 23 of chapter 5 in Matthew, Jesus says, So if you're presenting a sacrifice at the altar in the temple and you suddenly remember that someone has something against you, leave your sacrifice there at the altar, go and be reconciled to the person, then come and offer your sacrifice to God. So Jesus said, this is literally so important to my heart that I'm willing to wait for your worship. I'm willing to wait for you to come into church. I'm willing to wait for you and delay that act of worship unto me for you to go and fix this relationship issue with this other person. Now, I, you know, we're not, you know, so naive enough to know that um, all relationship issues can just be fi fixed right. like that, right? Like mm -hmm. some things take time. But I think Jesus is really drawing the point to being proactive, being intentional mm -hmm. in your relationships. And in particular, he's talking about anger here. You know, you've heard it said, don't murder someone. Well, you know, we're all pretty much living by that one. I don't know anyone who has murdered someone else. But I know a lot of people, myself included, who have been angry at other people. Yeah. And it's like Jesus just took the, the standard, the minimum standard that uh, the Jews were used to living to at this time. And he just said, you've heard it said here, but here's the heart of God for you up here. Mm -hmm. And I think that's good news for us to just recognize the Lord has a high standard of healthy relationships among his people, especially. And uh, we have to be careful and guard our hearts against anger and the effects of it. I love what Michael Miller says. He has a, a message called Aged Anger. And he says, love ages like wine. Anger ages like milk. Yeah. <laughs> just get the, the mental picture. You know, it's starting to get hot outside. Uh, you know, imagine leaving a, a full glass of milk out you know, in the sun for a few days and what happens to it. You know, wine gets sweeter and better over time. Milk obviously curdles and gets awful. And in your heart, if you have love towards someone else, that's aging and turning into something beautiful. If you have anger in your heart towards someone, it's aging like milk and turning into something really rancid. So we want to deal with this. And Jesus said, go, go be reconciled. Leave your offering at the altar. Go be reconciled. Then come back and bring your worship. Again, I, I just believe this is a major aspect to what God's going to do. Whatever he's going to pour out, revival, awakening, like whatever, whatever we end up calling it, all the prophetic promises and things that we're excited and anticipating and waiting for, I think relational health and health uh, in our culture as a church and as a people of God is going to be a huge part of that. I think that's on God's heart. Yeah. So good. I love this. And I'm excited to jump into the discussion questions. There's a lot of great stuff to talk about here. So take the time to do that. If you need to pause the video, go ahead and do that and really reflect on everything we just talked about.
Hey, welcome back. Hopefully you had some great discussion. Uh, we really hope that these discussions around watch parties is, you know, one of the best discussions you have all week. So uh, we want to dive a little deeper into Matthew 5 here with the final invitation, okay? We read Matthew 5 when Jesus said, if you remember someone has something against you, leave your offering at the altar, go be reconciled. And I just want to ask right now, as bluntly as I can, who did you think about when we read those words? <laughs> Don't worry, I'm not going to ask you to say their name out loud. Maybe they're sitting in your watch party with you right now. Um, or maybe it's, you know, your, your spouse right next to you on the seat, whatever uh, the situation may be. Uh, is there someone that came to mind that you're like, you know what, they have something against me. Um, I let them down. I, I said something that I shouldn't have said. And, and I know I need to apologize, but our pride and our, our fear and all those things that hold us back. Jesus is giving you that nudge right now, just a little Holy Spirit nudge right now to go and, and be proactive, be intentional, make amends if possible, or at least start the conversation that leads mm -hmm. to reconciliation. The Spirit of God will help you because that's what's on his heart for you. More and better, healthy relationships in your life. That's what God wants for you. Yeah, that's all great. And thank you so much, guys, for joining us for this watch party. It's always my favorite thing to do where we get to pursue Jesus together. And we will see you at the next watch party or even this Sunday at church. Bye, guys. Bye.